Vinova is a software company established less than two years ago, boasting a team of young, enthusiastic technical experts. Their application, named Vinova App, has received highly positive reviews from the market. However, in the competitive market, facing fierce competition, Vinova is focused on enhancing the quality of its products and services. Simultaneously, they are expanding their market internationally. Park Min Young, with outstanding academic achievements and capabilities, coupled with her beautiful and attractive appearance, was immediately welcomed by the Vinova Software Company upon graduation. She was appointed to the position of assistant to the general director. Today, Park Min Young steps into the company for the first time with a very awkward feeling. She still vividly remembers the conversation with Kim Jisoo yesterday. Every time she thinks about it, realizing her misunderstanding of Park Jimin, Park Min Young feels extremely embarrassed, her cheeks turning hot. So shameful, I am too ashamed. I told Kim Jisoo that Park Jimin wanted to pursue me, and it's been a day, even when going to work, she still can't forget that sense of shame. What should she do? Moreover, every time she recalls that embarrassment, Park Jimin's face appears in her mind. Especially, his gaze seems to be questioning her, making her feel both embarrassed and remorseful. She doesn't know how to face Park Jimin. Does he know that she misunderstood him? It's strange. Park Min Young was deeply lost in thought when the voice of the CEO echoed, Min Young, come over here for a moment. There's an assignment for you. Immediately, this startled Park Min Young. She hastily stood up, her face turning pale, and her eyes betraying a fearful glimmer. Yes, sir, she stammered. Subsequently, she hurried into the room to receive her task. Through investigation, Ji Sung had a somewhat clear understanding of President Bakyun's preferences. President Bakyun was a person enamored with beauty, and Ji Sung knew that to persuade President Bakyun to invest in the company, she needed to leverage the beauty of Park Min Young, because Park Min Young was like a beautiful flower, captivating and effortlessly drawing President Bakyun's attention. This was precisely what Ji Sung needed. Therefore, the mission to seduce President Bakyun at the charity gal was entrusted to Park Min Young. As Park Min Young entered the office, Jai Sung directly addressed the matter. Have you ever heard of the charity gala? After hearing this, Park Min Young, with suspicion in her voice, asked, Charity gala? CEO Ji Sung is an independent woman, over 30 years old. She looked at Park Min Young with a confident gaze and explained, that's right, recently the business community in Jai Ambakong will organize a charity gala. By that time, major conglomerates like the Yu family, Quan family, Mu family, Ji family, along with some renowned artists in the entertainment industry, will all be in attendance. My assistant, Yu, have meticulously prepared invitation cards and formal evening attire. At that time, please represent me as my assistant. Additionally, I have another task for you. I heard that this charity dinner has managed to invite a mysterious tycoon named President Bakyun. This is a great opportunity for the company to expand relationships and seek potential partners. Your task is to network with President Bakyun, help the company create a positive impression, and persuade him to invest in our company, paving the way for future endeavors. After listening, Park Min Young understood Ji Sung's intentions. She felt a bit uneasy, thinking to herself, Oh my, here we go again. I thought having a female CEO would avoid these situations, but thinking about the job, she pushed aside that thought and adopted a more positive perspective. Well, whatever, it's just a normal networking task, after all. After careful consideration, Park Min Young took a deep breath, trying to calm herself. Then, she accepted the invitation card, nodded in agreement, and said, Yes, I will do my best. Upon hearing this, Ji Sung's serious gaze served as a solemn reminder. Effort doesn't mean attempting. It means accomplishing. While Park Min Young and the elder CEO of Vinova App were discussing the charity gala, Park Jimin also received an invitation. Not only were the two engaged in this conversation, but Yu Ain also called him personally. Have you seen President Bakin's Weibo? Oh Young's sister took matters into her own hands and clashed with the An family in the entertainment industry. Park Jimin, feeling bored perked up immediately upon hearing this. Oh, Young Sil, that's fantastic. I'm going to check it out. He quickly opened Weibo. Oh my, the heat is intense. The news, reporting that Oh, Young Sil took action to shatter the entertainment industry tycoons, currently topped the charts with over 270 million views 
and more than 600,000 conflicting comments. Among them were supportive comments for Oh Young Sil. The situation has reached this point, and I can't stay silent anymore. I have to speak up for those who have been harmed by these scoundrels. Support our sister. Lever soar high. There were also critical comments directed at Oh Young Sil. Oh Young Sil, with so much shady business on your own end, biting back at others? Those in the dark don't see the truth. These are all baseless accusations. Oh Young Sil is innocent. In the entertainment industry, there's an unspoken rule that artists aspiring for fame must endure the pressure from industry tycoons. The Yon family also sought to impose these unwritten rules on Oh Young Sil. She boldly refused and, as a result, faced sabotage and ostracism. Oh Young Sil is a woman with a strong spirit in the entertainment industry. Quite extraordinary. She is someone willing to stand up and fight for justice, regardless of the difficulties and threats. You awe and talk for a while, finally bringing up the topic you cared about the most. There will be a charity auction, and all the prominent figures in Jayongbokong will be attending. President Bakyam must come for sure. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin couldn't help but be skeptical. A charity auction. However, in his mind, he kept thinking, it's probably a place to spend money freely. It's worth checking out, but there's something to do before that. Since the day Park Jimin left, Oh Young Sil has been contemplating through the night. Ultimately, she decided to accept his terms. Being a former lover is preferable to being labeled a homewrecker, facing public scorn, and being treated like a rat running across the street. As long as Park Jimin fulfills his promises, she is willing to pay any price. She is a clever person, understanding that in her current situation, to make the comeback, she must clear her name. There are numerous ways to clear her name, but the most effective one is to publicly expose the unwritten rules of the On family, the ones that ruined her life. However, the On family is not an easily squeezable soft fruit. If they engage in mudslinging, she might end up with a torn net and dead fish. Quickly, Oh Young Sil faced opposition when she touched the fierce tiger. Quickly, the lackeys of the On family are starting to run rampant. They are releasing filthy comments to smear my reputation. Create fake accounts to push down their comments. I don't believe the truth can still be deceived. Mrs. O, the On family's forces are much stronger than ours. They can hire people with technology skills to attack us online. We're about to collapse. Hurry, contact the fans. They are our last strength. The On family is spending a lot of money to hire a team of PR professionals and internet trolls to tarnish us. Mrs. O, the funds in the company's account are running out soon. Oh Young Sil's eyes suddenly reddened, tears welling up in the corners, and she felt an overwhelming sense of injustice in her heart. The situation was getting worse, yet amidst the boiling turmoil, Park Jimin continued to transfer money to her. Immediately, Oh Young Sil received a message from the bank with a crisp sound reminiscent of a turning pig on a spit. Your bank account has been credited with the amount of 100 million. After reading, Oh Young Sil stood frozen in place finding it a bit hard to believe her eyes. Another 100 million. Could it be that he thinks his money is not enough to worry about the Weibo dispute? At the moment when Oh Young Sil felt most helpless and vulnerable, she suddenly felt like she had found a refuge. Not only that, this refuge seemed incredibly sturdy, giving her a sense of safety. However, right after that, her inner self vehemently denied. Wretched guy, flaunting a few pennies, as if he's so rich, as if he's the only one with money. Despite the denial, Oh Young Sil still carried an appreciation in her heart that was hard to conceal. Oh Young Sil's goodwill increased by 10 points. Indeed, financial wealth had a magical charm that was not ordinary, and not everyone could resist it. The charity event took place at the Lemon Tree Hotel, one of the top luxurious hotels in Jayambagam, the capital and a large scale one nationwide. The Lemon Tree Hotel is designed in a classic European style with intricate and elegant details. The attendees of today's charity event are all successful and well-known figures in the upper class of Jayongbakum, including business people, investors, artists, and politicians. At this moment, the Emperor Chat Group is gathering and engaging in lively discussions. Yi Rion looks at Oh Young and smiles inquiringly. Oh Young, you seem to be in high spirits lately. You used to worry about your sister all the time, but today it's like you've become a different person. Normally, no one would bother to pay attention to him, but lately, his sister has become famous, so it's only fitting to ask. 
Oh Young hears people talking about him, and he joins in the banter. Poor my sister, luckily she got to know Chairman Bakyun. Now, consider me his half-brother. Meeting someone cheerful lifts the spirits. Basically, you guys don't know how rich Chairman Bakyun is. The other day, after meeting my sister, he directly gifted her a La Ferrari worth over 20 million. Not only that, Chairman Bakyun recognized my sister's acting talent and declared a 2 billion investment to establish a television company. Helping my sister star in two major films with an investment budget of over 500 million each. Moreover, Chairman Bakyun not only talked big, but he also transferred 100 million to my sister, and yesterday, another 100 million. My sister will soon be able to return to the peak. Oh Young boasts excitedly, leaving the wealthy elates of Jai Ong Bakung speechless. As Oh Young stated, Oh Young Sil had been absent for a while suddenly reappearing and openly criticizing the director Ji Ho. Her actions created a shockwave, causing a stir in the entertainment industry. Without Chairman Bakian standing behind her, would she dare to do such a thing? Oh Young, the one who spent 500 million to buy shares of the T family, right? Indeed, I heard that Chairman Bakian holds significant power and influence. Even Ju Chou He, the president of the Han Group, was humiliated by Chairman Bakian. No wonder, Yesterday, I saw your sister on the internet quarreling with half of the entertainment industry. With such a solid support, she is truly formidable. I heard Chairman Bakyun is a very mysterious person, and no one knows much about his background. But regardless of his background, he is a person of immense power and influence, capable of dominating in the entertainment world. Oh Young, if you have the chance, introduce me to Chairman Bakyun a bit. My grandfather has been wanting to meet Chairman Bakyun, for a long time. Poor my brother-in-law. A few days ago, he even invited me for a drink. He was so delighted. Hearing this, Quan Ji Yong stood up and left. Yi Rian looked after him inquisitively and asked, Hey, Quan Ji Yong, where are you going? Just tell us, I need to freshen up a bit. As Quan Ji Yong left the room, someone immediately became curious about him, saying, Who is that? Quan Ji Yong the second son of the Quan family, he joined the Emperor Chak group a few days ago, and everyone is interested in his elder brother, Quan Young A, a remarkable figure. He revitalized the Quan family business from a declining state. Under Quan Young A's leadership, within just five years, the Quan family conglomerate has become a powerful corporation with a personal net worth reaching $9 billion. However, when compared to Quan Young A, Quan Ji Young still has a huge gap. Quan Ji Yong left the room feeling uncomfortable, muttering to himself, Huh, what's so impressive about it? It's just because your sister decided to become a lawful wife. She acts all high and mighty. Without Chairman Bakian, you wouldn't even be worthy of being my butler. Today's charity auction is essentially a place where the elites of Jiaom Bakom divide the pie, and the benefits in the next 15 years will be distributed through this event. Chairman Bakian is the most important guest tonight. I've collected all the information related to Chairman Bakyun for a long time, and I've conducted a psychological analysis for him. The margin of error won't exceed 5%. He is a middle-aged person, elegant, with integrity, and a broad vision. Even when born, he had a modest personality, and his outstanding qualities are hard to conceal. Do you all want to make friends with Chairman Bakyun? Well, I don't need to ponder. I'll just sit by the door and wait. The moment Chairman Bakyun arrives, I'll intercept him immediately. Watch and learn. Quan Young A, I'll prove through actions that I am the most valuable heir of the Quan family conglomerate. Quan Ji Yong stood by the door, waiting for Chairman Bakyun, contemplating while absent-mindedly looking around. Suddenly, he jolted, recognizing a familiar figure. Isn't that Park Jimin? What is he doing here? And why is he dressed in security guard attire? Quan Ji Yong widened his eyes, unable to believe what he was seeing. The person he always considered an enemy was now standing in front of him in tattered security guard clothing. Tonight, Park Jimin was dressed differently from usual, wearing a relatively simple suit. However, as he approached the hotel door, he felt awkward seeing the party attendees, all dressed extravagantly in the latest expensive and stylish suits. He felt like he was lost in the crowd, thinking, This is the charity event. Indeed, very grand. To attend this event, I had to spend quite a sum of money. Recently, I spent a hopping 200000 to buy this rather expensive suit, but I still decided to buy it because it's beautiful. 
Now looking back, I still feel a bit regretful. Spending money can be such a bittersweet feeling. Thinking about this, tears welled up in part Jimin's eyes. Right after, he suddenly realized something that surprised him. How did I end up buying clothes today that look like the hotel security uniform? Oh no, what's going on? Everyone is wearing suits with leather shoes, and they look like uniforms. Oh my, when did hotel security start wearing expensive suits like this? That's really professional. Part Jimin felt awkward and became even more bewildered. He just discovered that times had changed. In his impression from television dramas, young men attending lavish parties usually dressed elegantly in suits and leather shoes. But currently, that seemed no longer true. At that moment, Quan Ji Yong approached with a mocking smile. Hey, isn't this the basketball player Part Jimin? How did you turn into a security guard after a few days without seeing you? The sneering voice belonged to him indeed. Quan Ji Yong continued to speak disdainfully. Recently, your finances must be tight, so you've taken up a job as a security guard to earn some extra money, huh? Part Jimin responded coldly, I'm sorry, I'm not a security guard. I'm an invited guest for tonight's party. Besides, we're not close. Please have some self-respect and stay away from me. Hearing this, Quan Ji Yong became even more contemptuous and deliberately teased, attending the party. Ha! Huh. What a coincidence. I'm also here for the party. Let's go inside together. Afterward, he sneered, smirked, and harbored a malicious thought. Ha! Huh. Pretending with me, acting like a worn-out security guard. I'll embarrass you. Thinking so, Quan Ji Yong laughed mockingly as he followed Park Jimin into the hotel. Just as they reached the hotel entrance, Part Jimin was stopped by security. Sir, please present your invitation. Part Jimin asked in confusion, Invitation? What invitation? Upon hearing this, Quan Ji Yong almost burst into laughter. Impossible who gets invited without an invitation. Part Jimin, stop pretending. Being a security guard is nothing to be ashamed of. No need to play the big shot. Ha ha ha. At this moment, Part Jimin had a darkened face and a fierce red gaze, knowing that Quan Ji Yong was deliberately provoking him. Quan Ji Yong's loud laughter and mockery in front of the hotel had attracted the attention of several onlookers. Suddenly, a luxurious black car pulled up in front of the hotel. Stepping out from the vehicle was an incredibly beautiful woman, adorned in a black evening gown. Initially, everyone was captivated by her long, slender legs. Park Min Young, observing the splendid party scene couldn't help but exclaim, this is the scene of a charity event. As she approached the hotel entrance, the form-fitting black evening gown showcased her slender and alluring figure. Gracefully, she moved like a fairy descending to the mortal realm, causing some people to pause mid-breath. Sensing her ethereal beauty, her eyes sparkled, holding myriad mysteries. Her long butterfly-like eyelashes, rosy cheeks resembling peach blossoms, ruby red lips and flowing, tilted hair added to her charm. Especially striking was her snow-white skin, in stark contrast to the black dress, accentuating her natural beauty. The dignified demeanor of the girl made it impossible to look away. Who is this girl? She's unbelievably beautiful. I immediately think of Miss Yang from the Yang family, Yang Goodbye, or the Miss Oh from the O oh family, Oh Young Sil. It's not certain if anyone can surpass her in beauty. In the upper class of Jiang Bakum, I've encountered many exquisite beauties, but this woman is an exception. I've never seen anyone so beautiful. As soon as Park Min Young entered the party, the eyes of the men around her immediately fixated on her, and their gossip about her beauty made her extremely uncomfortable. Though she didn't like this attention, she had a mission tonight, to persuade Chairman Back In to invest in her company. Park Min Young was absorbed in thoughts about how to convince Chairman Back In when she suddenly heard loud laughter and mockery from Quan Ji Yong, attending the party without an invitation. That's strange, making a big fuss. She turned around, and a familiar figure that had been lingering in her mind for the past few days appeared. Part Jimin, he's here too. Part Jimin, infuriated, retorted, I told you I don't have an invitation, but I am genuinely invited. Hearing the loud voice of Part Jimin, it made the hotel security raise an eyebrow but they remained calm and explained. As far as I know, all guests have been issued invitations. Upon hearing this, Quan Ji Yong, who was standing nearby, added, That's right, those without invitations are special guests, such as my brother, CEO Quan Yong A of the Quan family conglomerate, 
the CEO of the Shark Company, President Jun, and the number one internet sensation, Chairman Bakyun. These three elders control tens of billions, especially the last one, Chairman Bakyun, whose wealth is immeasurable. After explaining this, Quan Ji Yong looked at Park Jimin with a cold tone and questioned, Park Jimin, may I ask which tycoon you represent? Quan Ji Yong thought that by mentioning these three wealthy individuals, he could corner Park Jimin, causing a scene and providing a reason for security to escort him out. However, Park Min Young intervened, saying, He is with me. Can't one invitation bring in one person? He is my friend. After speaking, Park Min Young quickly handed the invitation to the security guard. Seeing the invitation, the security guard immediately bowed and accepted it, saying, Yes, ma'am. Park Jimin looked at Park Min Young with a puzzled expression, thinking, This damn girl probably hates me, yet she helps me out. Could she have some ulterior motive? Although Park Jimin didn't really need the help, he couldn't believe that Park Min Young, who had always disliked him, would suddenly intervene to assist him. The more Park Jimin thought about it, the more perplexed he felt. However, at this moment, Park Min Young coldly explained her actions. Go in. Let me make it clear. I helped you not because I've changed my opinion of you, but because I want to repay you. That night, I misunderstood you. And that's all. Park Jimin, upon hearing this, felt even more uncomfortable, muttering to himself, repaying me by pretending to make a threatening call to the Dong family hair, and she ruined everything. She thinks she's helping me. Where does she get that confidence? Park Minyoun. After contemplating, Park Jimin, without any courtesy, remarked, Do you think that's how you repay me? I feel quite disadvantaged. I came here because I was invited, not to tag along with you. Don't make a big deal out of it. This isn't the Ho Dai Chu Student Union. Upon hearing this, Park Min Young blushed. She initially thought he would thank her, but she didn't expect Park Jimin's reaction. She became so angry that her lungs almost burst, saying, You, you, don't bother about him. I tried to help you, and you mock me. Just go die. Men with handsome faces are really not worth it. The more Park Min Young thought about it, the angrier she became. Her hands clenched tightly, and her whole body trembled with anger. She couldn't believe that Park Jimin would treat her this way. She initially thought he was a good person, but he turned out to be ungrateful. Meanwhile, seeing Park Min Young so enraged, Park Jimin was also taken aback. He didn't expect her to get so angry. He just wanted to let her know that he didn't need her help, but he didn't anticipate her profound misunderstanding. At this moment, a crowd of onlookers witnessed the entire incident and burst into scornful laughter. They spoke loudly without any hesitation, clearly intending to leave Park Jimin utterly embarrassed. Come on, I was just about to say. This guy is a scammer, let in, and still acting all high and mighty. This year, there are too many scammers trying to freeload. Men like him are truly disgusting, lacking integrity, and yet deluding themselves with a sense of power. Truly disgusting. Quan Ji Yong, hearing the mocking voices, appeared quite pleased. He added a few words casually. Park Jimin, a profession doesn't determine your worth, but you're obviously a security guard, deliberately pretending to be an invited guest. Living in such delusions, be careful about the difficult path you might face in the future. As everyone continued to mock him, Park Jimin couldn't endure another moment. His eyes turned bloodshot, and the veins on his forehead swelled. Immediately, a cold thought crossed his mind. Laugh. Go ahead, laugh. Let's see who will face a more difficult path later. Yi Ryun, who had just walked into the main hall, glanced towards the entrance and muttered, What's going on? Why is there such a crowd here? Is there something interesting to see? However, he couldn't help but be startled immediately. The surrounding crowd was buzzing with discussion, all pointing towards Chairman Bakyun. Quan Jiayong, with an arrogant expression was patting Chairman Bakyun's shoulder, displaying clear disdain. This sight infuriated Yi Ryun. Damn it, this isn't Chairman Bakyun. I thought it was him. Turns out, it's the second son of the Quan family gone mad, openly mocking Chairman Bakyun. This is asking for trouble. I need to call Lion right away. From several months ago, Yu Yin had begun to take over the family business responsibilities. Bearing the weight of the family's significant responsibilities, he had grown considerably. In fact, he possessed impressive capabilities. Recently, he had developed connections with Chairman Bakyun and Long Wong. One a tycoon, 
the other a major shareholder of the double conglomerate. Before the start of the dinner party, he had the opportunity to meet Kwan Young A, a distinguished figure in the Gayong Bakang business community. The two engaged in conversation and found many commonalities. Yu Lian was eager to learn from Kwan Young A's valuable experiences, and she was more than willing to share her insights. Kwan Young A, a savvy businesswoman, quickly grasped the camaraderie between Yu Lian and Chairman Bakyun. Having just exchanged a few words, she eagerly inquired about Chairman Bakyun. I heard Chairman Bakyun is attending tonight. I've wanted to build a connection for a long time. When the time comes, I'll need Chairman Yu to help introduce me. Chairman Kwan has spoken highly, and although Chairman Bakyun is my friend, I can't say much about his matters. I treat him like an older brother. Chairman Yu is too modest. Everyone knows Chairman Bakyun and Yu. Before Kwan Young A could finish speaking, Yu Ah's phone suddenly rang. Glancing at the screen, he saw a call from Yi Rian and promptly interrupted Kwan Young A. Excuse me, I need to take this call. Chung Hee, what's going on? I told you to pick up Chairman Bakyun. Something's not right with Ian. Chairman Bakyun is blocked at the entrance, and someone is humiliating him. What the hell? Who's foolish enough to insult tonight's special guest? Who dares to disgrace Chairman Bakyun? What the hell is going on? Who has the audacity against the two young masters of the Quan family, Quan Jiayong? As Yu Lian finished speaking, Quan Young A felt as if lightning had struck him. This news was akin to a divine punishment. He had been trying to establish a connection with the mysterious Chairman Bakyun, deliberately targeting Yu Lian at tonight's dinner party. However, it seemed there was no more opportunity now. Without caution, the Quan family conglomerate faced the risk of bankruptcy. Immediately, Quan Young A seemed to lose his mind, rushing toward the hotel entrance, cursing along the way. This reckless fool, Chairman Bakyun, how dare you lay a hand on him? Yu Ah in quickly followed, calling out loudly, Chairman Quan, Chairman Quan, please don't stir things up. At the hotel entrance, the upper class crowd was buzzing with speculation. Chairman Bakyun is becoming the target of criticism. They astutely recognize that Quan Ji Yong, the second young master of the Quan family intended to discipline the young man. In this situation, cooperating a bit seemed unavoidable. Consider it giving him some face. Quan Ji Yong patted Park Jimin on the shoulder, his eyes filled with disdain and mockery. After teaching Park Jimin a lesson and seeing him remain silent, he smirked like a triumphant victor. I told you, why act so arrogantly and try to infiltrate our social circle? Even a security guard suits you well. Park Jimin tried to maintain composure in the face of Quan Jae Yong's humiliation. Throughout his three years as a student, he had grown accustomed to such harsh words. This time was no exception. Following this, Park Jimin pushed Quan Jae Yong's hand off his shoulder, his gaze icy. Keep your hands off. A despicable guy like you has no right to lecture me. Even if your older brother is here, he has no authority over me. Hearing that, Quan Jae Yong burst into triumphant laughter. He flaunted his arms arrogantly, his tone full of confidence. Ha 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 ha, this security guard talks too much, looking down on this person, looking down on that person. Do you know who my older brother is? My older brother is Quan Young A, the chairman of the Quan family conglomerate, holding assets worth tens of billions and owning numerous businesses. Hiccup, even Guy Ombakum trembles at his influence. Pointing to his chest, he continued in a haughty tone. I am the second son of the Quan family conglomerate, the younger brother of Quan Young A. I've taught you a lesson. What can you do to me? You're just a rotten security guard. Park Min Young stood aside, indifferent and chilly. Even though she found Quan Jai Yong's attempt to teach Park Jimin a lesson amusing, hearing him boast about his family background made her disdainful. Quan Jai Yong, this guy, always boasting about the Park family conglomerate and his brother. He's just a useless fellow. But regardless, he's still much better than Park Jimin. I showed kindness to you, yet you still think too highly of yourself. Park Jimin, your family deserves you. When Quan Young A and Yu Ain appeared, immediately there were loud cheers. Chairman Quan, you're here. Also, young master Yu Ain has arrived. Immediately, everyone shifted to the sides to make way for the two approaching figures. At this moment, the ladies felt their hearts beating faster. Not a few directly bowed, offering their business cards, respectfully, saying, Greetings, Chairman Kwan. 
However, Quan Young A did not pause. His face darkened, and his cold gaze directed towards Quan Ji Yong as he walked forward. This scene caught the attention of some, sparking whispers and discussions. Chairman Quan doesn't seem very happy. Someone must have provoked him. Some even thought that Park Jimin's days were numbered. When Quan Young A stood in front of Quan Ji Yong and Park Jimin with a somber face, seeing this, he chuckled lightly, tapped his chest, and spoke with an arrogant tone. Big brother, why are you here? I can handle this little matter. Seeing Quan Young A extend his hand and deliver a resounding slap straight to Quan Jiong's face, the young man was left dazed and bleeding from his nose. It must be said, the slap was merciless. Quan Jiong held his face in pain, his eyes filled with confusion and indignation as he questioned. What are you doing? Why did you get me? Quan Young A looked at him with a bullet-like gaze, simultaneously signaling Park Jimin and angrily scolding. Why are you asking? Is there no IQ in your head? Quickly go and apologize to Chairman Bakyun. Immediately, everyone looking at Park Jimin felt a bit of fear. The reason being that he was too young, only 20 years old but already so talented. However, precisely because of his young age, it made people wary. Quan Jiang, after that, was also stunned, not expecting Park Jimin to be so young. Chairman Bakyun. Next, to express his sincerity, Quan Yong A bowed 90 degrees in front of Park Jimin, speaking clearly and fluently. Chairman Bakyun, I apologize. My younger brother just committed an offense against you. I apologize on his behalf. Quan Yong A's apology echoed, making everyone so astonished that their eyes widened and their mouths gaped, experiencing a surge of emotions, sending shivers down their spines. At this moment, those who had mocked Park Jimin bowed their heads, not daring to lift their faces. They resembled black turtles retracting their heads, originally wanting to flatter the second young master of the Quan family. Little did they know they had offended someone even more formidable. In their confusion and fear, silence lingered for a few seconds before people began to chatter. Bakyun, the legendary chairman, owner of assets worth hundreds of billions, and a special guest at tonight's event. Truly, no need for an invitation. Chairman Bakyun is indeed an attractive figure, always so humble. Chairman Bakyun, I'm your fan. Can you please give me your autograph? Quan Jiang's expression was extremely complicated, displaying a mixture of amazement, regret, and anger. In his mind, a thousand whys began to emerge. Why is everything like this? Playing the piano, playing basketball. I've lost to him in everything. Even in family background, I'm inferior to him. Is he the protagonist in a novel? Am I his nemesis? He truly hadn't thought about it. Just a few days ago, he was in the Emperor Chat Group, flattering Chairman Bakyun in various ways. He even independently researched this mysterious character. Meanwhile, Park Jimin was just an insignificant junior. But unexpectedly, Chairman Bakyun and Park Jimin turned out to be one. After this incident, he would no longer have a place in Jiangbakung, and even the Quan family's business would fall into a deadlock. No one would want to do business with someone who offended the legendary Chairman Bakyun. Yu Aen looked at Park Jimin awkwardly and said, Today's situation with Mr. Bakyun is my fault. You should have called me. It's quite impolite not to. The atmosphere was somewhat tense. Everyone holding their breath, waiting for Park Jimin's reaction. They couldn't imagine how someone of such high status would respond to such a humiliating situation. However, right after that, an action by Park Jimin made everyone feel relieved. He simply patted Yu Ayan on the shoulder and said with a gentle voice, Don't worry about our relationship. I won't blame you for these things. The lack of manners is on the part of the Yu family's patriarch. The dinner is about to start. We shouldn't stay here any longer. We are all well-known figures in Jiangbakong. So let's go inside. After ushering everyone into the banquet, Yu Ayan glanced at Park Jimin, his brows furrowed in discomfort. Immediately, Yu Wan angrily exclaimed, Call the manager here immediately. Whoever arranged the security guard uniform for today's party changed the entire set for me. Do you hear me? Yu Wan's voice echoed throughout the hotel, startling everyone. At this moment, Park Min Young looked at Park Jimin with wide eyes, feeling as if she were being swept away by a strong wind, making her unable to remain calm. I thought Park Jimin was arrogant and shallow but he turns out to be genuinely humble. If Park Jimin wanted with his legendary status, 
countless girls at school would be chasing after him. He doesn't need my help at all. I've done too much. Now, I feel really embarrassed. How can I fulfill my boss's assignment now? Thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you enjoyed the content, please don't hesitate to hit the like and share buttons. Your support is a huge motivation for me to continue creating more videos. Additionally, there are many other interesting story videos on my channel, so feel free to check them out. Thank you.